Right, uh, this is what what truth is reality. Uh, since the birth of the camera, uh, people have been using it to tell stories, that's why a lot of people use the camera these days. Uh, the person with the camera is the one who tells the story through the moving images, just in a way of telling stories in a different way rather than saying it to somebody or uh, reading it in a book or something. Um, therefore, the story loses its truth each time it's told. Um, in film production, there are lots of people that are part of the whole project um, and that each one of them will have their own view on the story and will manipulate it in whatever way they choose to. Uh, two examples in this are the cameraman and the editor. The cameraman is the one who picks the shots and the editor is the one who picks the shots from the shots he's been given. So, in a way, it's been manipulated twice before you've even got it published or anything like that. So. Um, what I'm interested in is truth, also known as reality, as there's barely any difference between them, but both of them are quite um, blurred on what the meanings are. Uh, I'm picking the documentary TT3D Closer to the Edge, uh, and here's a little quick bit. So from that you can see basically it's just a documentary based around the 2010 TT. Um, right, uh, TT, yeah, it's a documentary basically based around Guy Martin who is one of the racers at the TT who's still not won the TT race yet. It's come close but not quite won. Um, but basically the documentary takes it from the point of a fan of Guy Martin. So like football you've got your football fans that will follow a specific team, but the TT is exactly the same, you've got people following specific riders that they really like. Yeah. But this is basically from a certain fan of Guy Martin. Not from Guy Martin's view, but a fan of his, because in the documentary uh, there are points where it discusses things that happened to Guy Martin on his route, on, on his way to and um, at the TT. Uh, but it takes, it understands both sides of the story. Uh, this is the example. Um, basically, uh, one of the points of this documentary, um, Guy Martin actually gets a 30 second time penalty for being. 0.1 of a mile an hour over the limit in the pit lane, basically. So um, the documentary basically shows it from the way that Guy Martin and the fan would see it as it's been a harsh penalty on Guy Martin for what he did when it was only 0.1 of a second, uh, 0.1 of a mile an hour, which is practically nothing. Uh, but basically, it looks at all, all of the people around him and the reasons why they think it's all wrong and why it's wrong penalising them and all that. But the way it does try to put some truth on this, it's not totally Guy Martin based, as it talks to the timekeeper who is the guy who actually gave Guy Martin the penalty. Uh, I'll this clip, I will have to find it. Uh, somewhere around here. And find it. There we go.
Oops. And it doesn't focus too much on this, it focuses more on Grand Martin just pulling up here and then going off back to his camp and that. Speed lane too fast and then it's a time penalty against it, now that's all I think. Okay, I just told you, just jump and fight, go into his bar, didn't even get his helmet off. So I'm sure he'll be back again. That's about this point with the guy, you know. It's just done 224 miles at, at those speeds, and then I'm told we're penalising for nothing. It's just a tiny thing, point one. So that was his. Over um, um, the guy who built the engine, he's obviously going on inside because he wants him to win. That's so that's one the view. The average and the average speed over the distance, and I used to say that their distance, and then the measuring over is actually to win money. Regulations. And that's the time, yeah. So for two people, it's just one time. Keeper. Keeper. Also, I ought to say that in the matter of time, uh, the timekeeper is word is law, and he records what are then considered to be matters of fact, from which there is no protest to appeal. Okay. So yeah, the way they've so actually depicted day. that as well is yeah. that they've made him look quite bad because it, it doesn't like say he's sorry, it just says he wants to get on and get gone. Doesn't really want to be part of the actual documentary or anything like that. So it looks like he's the bad guy penalising Guy Martin for what he did. Which technically he was wrong to do, but that's it's still debatable whether the penalty was right. Um, another point in the documentary is um, quite a touching part where one of the TT riders unfortunately is killed. The rider Paul Dodds uh, had a fatal crash. Um, this led to a small part of the documentary being dedicated to him. Um, but the reason I've picked this is because the way the documentary uh, sort of depicts death at the TT, which is unfortunately a, very, a fairly common thing. The reason we, we make that choice to go racing is just the whole, um, you know, we're here for a good time. What can we, you know, how can we get the most fun out of life? And we want the kids to share that as well. They're, they come along, they love it, they're part of it. Because we had that time with them, it's made us who we are, it's made them who they are. You know, they're, they're incredible. And they're strong, they're fun. And we have fun, you know, we have so much fun. It doesn't stop. And we're going to keep on having fun, you know. Ride the bikes, play the music, dance in the kitchen. You know, still love the TT, still love the island, you can't change that. You can't love the death, you can't love the loss, but you can't love the, the excitement and the thrill without knowing that that's part of it. It wouldn't be so exciting if it didn't have the risk. That's why they want to do it. Uh, so basically that was the wife of Paul Dobbs. Um, and what she said is that you can't love the TT without knowing that the death and the danger exists. Um, and as bad as that sounds, it holds true for a lot of the fans that go, they know the risks, and but they wouldn't be as drawn to the TT if the risks weren't there. Which is why a lot of people prefer going to see the TT or road racing rather than going and seeing circuit racing, because you're a long way off from the circuit racing, but they're close to the action, and it's, it feels more dangerous, which gets people hyped up a lot more. Uh, but the way that that's from a fan's point of view, what it doesn't actually say in the documentary is how much the safety people are really trying to get the TT actually to stop because of the danger, um, which basically we don't mention in there. All the riders and all the fans do realise that yes, it's dangerous and that if I do have a crash, I'm probably going to kill myself. 
Um, but there's a lot of people, safety people that are trying to stop it, and they do don't actually mention the safety side of stuff. I don't think they actually mention it at all in the documentary. Um, as you can see, the documentary holds true in a lot of ways to the fans, um, but it's only from one person's perspective as well. Uh, from this isn't a bad thing because it does mean the documentary does flow better because it is all from one person's point of view and there's no mixed uh, messages or anything like that. Um, but it's not totally retelling the truth. Um, the way that the documentary handles things like death and the race uh, and political discussions and all that kind of stuff um, is quite clever because it does try it does try to get both sides of it for the political stuff and on the safety side it gets what the fans want rather than the other people who are very against the TT and all the bike racing. Um, but it does hold true to what fans think. Um, but then you've got to ask the question, what does that make does what does that make it truthful? Because it is just from one person's perspective. Like a lot of other people have been saying today that truth is what you meant with it, maybe. Excellent. Okay, well, this is now the second or even third time that the student has shown me a clip and I'm closer to the edge. I still haven't watched it, but every time I see clips from it, it makes me want to watch it, even though I have zero interest in motorsports of any kind. And that in itself, I think, is, is testament to the kind of thing it needs to be on the surface. Uh, any questions for Adam? Do you agree with the way they showed it from Ben Martin's fans? Um, it's a difficult question because I do agree with the way they showed it. It's from a, there's a big thing about Guy Martin as a person because he's very he's a a difficult person. A lot of people like him because he's a bit of an outgoing sort of I don't play by the rules kind of person. That's why a lot of people like him. So if they depicted him differently in the documentary probably wouldn't have been as successful as it was. Because yeah. basically around Guy Martin is he's a very interesting character that a lot of people like. Very yeah. normal. The way yes. it's, 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 it's Guy Martin for it as well. Like the whole thing's based on that being one man or over. Yeah. Then it's obviously gonna be well more biased if it was him talking about himself. So yeah. getting his friend have got like part for for Guy and the fact that he was over the next. Yeah. Well, the, the, the fact of the matter is that they, they, there's also some interviews with his rival racers, and they do actually select bits of the bits of the interviews that actually do depict them in a bad light. Like they, they, they say some stuff that sounds fairly mean or kind of greedy, and they, they only show the, really show those bits of the in, uh, the interviews. Yeah. There's one scene where there's one of the other racers uh, drives to the um, CT in his huge kind of Big camp, big camp, yeah, camp of man lorry thing that looks like it costs like half a, half a million pounds, and and it's just kind of it kind of and then it depicts kind of it shows Guy Martin underneath the lorry working on it, and it's just kind of it sees him as an ordinary guy, which is where it starts at the beginning. It's just a regular guy where he's just half a million pounds. Thanks for that, Danny. Thanks.